sketching um i'm a blade drawing so i thought i might as well for a live stream so um a little bit different obviously to some of the uh drawing tutorials i do during the day um but we'll uh so we'll see where it goes You know, one thing about this, uh, this lockdown is I've had uh, a lot more time to just draw kind of random stuff, which has been nice. I've been joining us for the um, for the live streams I've been doing during the day. Thanks very much for that. Kind of uh, appreciate all the support we've been getting. I'll keep as I'll keep them going as uh, as long as people keep watching them, really. This is a I'm not entirely sure where this is gonna go yet. Okay. Making a few bits up as we go along. I don't really know who's ever late enough to watch these things. Um, so the daytime ones that we do tend to get a fair few views. Nighttime ones uh, are a bit more, a bit more sort of random.
All right, Phil. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I was up late working. Um, finished work about ten minutes ago, so I thought I'd, uh, this is how I relax. Um, it's kind of my job, man, but it's a uh, yeah, it's not my hobby as well, you know. Thing is with these late night sketches, uh, they tend to be after a, a few drinks, so I never, I never really know how good they're going to turn out. Nice thing about um, this whole lockdown, um, like I said like last time I did a, I did one of these late night things. Um, the amount of kind of cool artwork that's coming out from from different people. Um, one of the projects that's kind of worth worth checking out um, is this year's Hole Fifty Two. Um, anybody who's who's not aware of what Hall 52 is. Uh, um, it's uh, basically a, a pack of cards with, with uh, original artwork from from Hall artists. Um, so last year I, I did the one of the Jokers. This year, um, the guys there were nice enough to ask me to do the Three of Diamonds. Are those Three of Diamonds? Yeah, Three of Diamonds. Um, it's basically just yeah, 52 different illustrations from uh, from all artists to kind of make up this this amazing pack of cards. Um, so I think some of the launch of it has been delayed slightly with with all this kind of stuff that's going on, but the project's still ongoing. There's interviews going out. There's artwork kind of going out. If you've not checked it out, check out Hall 52. Um, search it on Facebook. Um, on Twitter, Instagram, um, it's a seriously cool project. Um, cheers, Phil. Um, yeah, anybody who's sort of been following the sessions, um, I've been doing uh, daily, daily drawing tutorials. Um, Ten o'clock weekday mornings. Um, obviously, a lot of people are. Kind of homeschooling at the moment, um, so simpler lessons, so 15 20 minutes most of the time, uh, to kind of help people out, cover everything from drawing horses to drawing monsters, easy ways to draw hands and their faces out, expressions, and a bunch of different bits in there. Something for everyone. Um, I'll keep them going for as long as uh, as long as everyone's on lockdown.
to not really sure where uh, where this is going yet but, uh, we'll see not sure how long this video is going to be again we'll see it's kind of a probably stop when i uh, when i run out of wine Whenever I'm doing these kind of drones, uh, they're never really, they're never really planned out. It's sort of sketchy bit. Um, see where it goes. I'll chop and change stuff as we go. Um, sort of hit and miss whether they're uh, <laughs> whether they're going to end up good or not. Uh, one of the nicest things so the last uh, last couple of weeks is the amount of uh, amount of people have been in touch, kind of sending me the uh, the artworks that they've done on the back of some of the lessons I've been I've been running through. It's been really nice to see. Um, kind of all ages as well. Um, originally started doing the lessons for just for kids, but there's been kind of Pretty big mix, different age groups sort of joining in, which has been nice. Charlotte Benson just crossed the bridge. Ah, cool. Um, I hope you uh, hope you don't enjoy the uh, the drone session. It was, um, obviously, I've not made it to schools for a few weeks now. But as soon as all this kind of um, as soon as all this settles down, I will be uh, I will be doing kind of the, uh, the school sessions again. Um, I've always enjoyed them. I think over the last like, ten years or so, I've been doing them. Um, probably worked with a couple of hundred thousand kids now. Um, things with most of the art sessions I teach, they uh, they tend to be. Well, I try to make them as sort of accessible as possible. Um, for me, honest, it's how people people. So I say it, but I do. I do genuinely believe that anybody can draw. Um, some people find it a hell of a lot easier than others. Some people just pick it up more easily than others. That's that's kind of obvious. Uh, but you know, anyone can draw if you uh, if you just follow a few rules um, and practice. It's pretty much what drawing is. Yeah. Um, the more rules you know how to follow, um, the more these kind of little little rules that you know, the better your drawings are going to be. Uh, 
Let's just get this eye in back there. This guy's looking a bit a bit weird with his one eye. On the side of the face to be in a, in a fair bit of shadow though, so let's just bang a bit of shading in there for now. Might go back and stick a bit of detail in there in a while. Some really kind of Gnarly looking teeth all over the place. So I'm not really 100% um, where this is going yet. Let's kind of keep drawing for a bit and sort of see where it goes. Oh, Charlotte, that's, uh, that's really good to hear. Like I say, some people, uh, some people can just pick up a pencil and draw anything. Um, some people take a little bit more practice. But the biggest thing with kids and drawing is just to encourage them um, just to enjoy themselves, you know. Um, way too many people get get tied up on trying to make things perfect and then if they can't make them perfect they get they get stressed out and they and they sort of give up um drawing's meant to be fun you know so if it stops being fun then what's the point in doing it yeah, the way to keep it fun is to not overly stress about getting things absolutely perfect um I mean, for me, when I when I was a kid, um, drawing drawing was 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 my thing, you know. That's what I enjoyed doing more than anything else. Um, so I drew every chance I got, um, every different style, every different format, kind of just whatever I could. Um, I would just draw all the time. So if your kids aren't to drawing, just just encourage them. Um, my schools are not pretty good now, to be honest. I know when I was when I was younger, um, it was wasn't encouraged anywhere near as much as it is now. Um, the idea of being able to earn a living from your art, um, well, nowadays I think if you said you want to be an artist, uh, that's that's kind of teachers and parents would would encourage the kids to go for it. I was lucky my parents my parents did. Um, but in school, the yeah, it's uh, it's definitely better now than it used to be. Richard, uh, just keep it up man. Just uh, just 
keep practicing, you know, it's just, just tough, isn't it? Success, okay. I mean, the thing is, with stuff like this, I, 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 the amount of drawings I do that end up just not working, just looking an absolute mess. Um, this one might still go there, because I'm not really, not really planning where this is going to go. Um, but there's... I mean, the thing that um, used to really sort of knack me when I was younger is uh, if people sort of compliment you on having a having like a natural ability and say, you're so lucky to be able to draw so well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always been able to draw, but I've done this for 30 years now as well, and I've drawn pretty much every day for 30 years. I think any artist is kind of the same. Um, even if you have a natural sort of affinity for, for drawing, you still got to practice. Uh, so the, the stuff that I draw now is better than the stuff that I was drawing 20 years ago, better than the stuff that I was drawing five years ago. Um, it's the stuff I'm drawing in five years from now is going to be better than the stuff I'm drawing now. Uh, the whole, whole point is you, you're practicing, you sort of keep improving. Um, Nobody is just, well, very few people can just draw to like a, an amazing level um, without without practicing and without learning. Um, if anybody can kind of hear, uh, hear the music in the background, let me know so I can turn it down a bit because obviously I don't want the, uh, these videos to be taken down for copyright things. Um, so some skits and people say, uh, you see, well, well, Richard, the other thing is if you, um, if you get to the stage where you are completely happy with all, all of your artwork, you might as well give up. You know, <laughs> I mean the whole the whole whole point is you want to keep improving. Um, most of the time, I mean I can be really happy with a uh, something that I've drawn briefly. Um, it's I usually end up looking back on it and finding stuff that actually I do that a little bit different. And, uh, um, it used to really bug me. It used to really really get to me and kind of like used to constantly strive to always do better on the next the next illustration. And I sort of do, uh, to a certain degree, obviously you're still always looking to improve, but then at some point you kind of just like, you sort of, you know, stop being so harsh on yourself, you know? It's nice and dark, just get, get a bit of depth in the back of the head. Yeah, I think I think all artists are pretty self-critical. Um, that's not a bad thing. That, that kind of keeps you improving, you know. Um, but yeah, you can only really do it to a point. Then you've got to you've got to give yourself a bit of a break, you know. So we're gonna we're gonna start giving this guy some. Uh, let's just get the shape of the arm in there. The shoulder coming up. I'm gonna get him with a few a few little tattoos there. Get a little bit more shading in on those eyes. 
that's uh, looking a bit a bit too flat. Shall I Benson? Yeah, good shout. Let's go for it. Um got to clear up a little bit of space on that. We you know the little stud up here, so let's just turn that into a, into a little nose ring. There we Alright, Ragsman, how's it going, mate? This is, uh, cause I started doing a, a few of these sort of late night, late night drawing sessions alongside the, the daytime ones. The daytime ones I've been doing are, are mainly for beginners and kids and, um, they are lessons. They are designed to kind of teach people a few little sort of techniques and skills and stuff that they can use in their drone. Um, any of these late night sessions that I do, it's just me drawing and then drinking most of the time. Um, there's never really too much of a plan to it. Playing any Cassio rigs? It's got to have horns. <laughs> yeah, I can bang some horns in on there. What else think? Alright, if we're going to put these in, we want them to be. Uh, I was going to originally do kind of a mohawk up here, but now I like the idea of horns. That's what I think. To be kind of that could work. Let's do this, get a little bit. light on there. Gonna leave a little bit of that in because we're gonna be uh, gonna be bringing some pretty heavy shading around on there. Good shout, man. Quite like, uh, quite like the horns on it. <laughs> um, there we go. Let's, uh, down here just get some pretty heavy shading in over on this side just sitting back you're looking a little bit flat let's bring that in I start to get a little bit of this uh, let's get some of these tattoos in a little bit better yeah
he's nice and uh, nice little legs for now. Uh, we're gonna come back into there in a minute. It's gonna uh, just make sure we got a little bit of the shading in on the face. Just start bringing it a little bit more depth to it all. Um, a few areas we've sort of neglected a bit from the detail. Um, I mean, this is one of the nice things you can, uh, you should sort of do when you're practicing your sketching. It's just different, different shading techniques. You can mix them up on the same drawing. You know, you don't have to stick to the same thing. Kind of basic shading, a bit cross hatching. Um, that's one of the things when you are sort of practicing your drawing. Don't be sort of afraid to try new stuff. Um, I mean, seriously, what can go wrong? You can mess a drawing up and just start again. Let's get some of those heavier, heavier areas in there. So on the mouth to kind of really, really have some depth to it. It's kind of a rags, <laughs> cheers on. Um, yeah, that's what these these late night sessions are all about. Just kind of grab yourself a beer, grab yourself a glass of wine, and just chill out. Watch some drawing. Um, this is a uh, this is one of the things that again people when they're starting out drawing are kind of not afraid of, um, but they sort of they stay away from doing this really heavy shading, um, and as a result, you can do massively sort of detailed drawings, um, but they still feel a little bit flat. And that's because there's just no areas of like really heavy black. I mean, shadows are important. The deep, deep shadows are important. Um, they are what give your drawing depth. So don't be afraid to add in these areas of, of, of black, of, of kind of really, really dark, dark shading. Um, you, you don't go overboard, you know, um, but it's, it's them that will sort of um, bring your drawings to life a bit more. Say so you can share the entire thing in, in just a, a ton of detail, um, but unless you get those the darker areas in, it, it's just not going to pop the way you want it to. Yeah, yeah Charlotte, I don't think you're alone with that. Um, going to be a lot of people coming out of this lockdown with big hairy faces and pretty terrible hair. Um, that's why I was a victim of the, uh, of the lockdown haircut. I got my little girl to shave my head. So we're starting to look a little bit David Hasselhoff, which you know, sounds way cooler than it actually was. Like. 
Sorry, just checking. I think my uh, yeah, my music's just gone off. Rugs, if you still learn it, I need you to send me some music. Um, anybody who's been been watching my uh, my tutorials, um, obviously I've been been doing them all live here on uh, on Facebook. Um, I've just uploaded all the old videos today to um, all the videos from the last couple of weeks to YouTube as well. Um, they will all be up on YouTube in a slightly more sort of edited format with titles and all that fancy stuff going on. Um, so we're a couple of days after each live stream. So anybody who wants to sort of catch up with them, just uh, just have a look on there. We just need to uh, I've got some paint somewhere. Might back a little bit of colour on this guy in a minute. Just just because. And the other thing I get an absolute ton of questions about is, uh, is the materials that I use. Um, so what sort of paper and pencils and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, rags, I'm going to do just that. I will be back uh, in one second now. Not going anywhere. So Doing just that, rugs. So it's so worth like. Uh, let's just get a little bit more. Uh, there uh, bring them to life a little bit more again let's just uh, not be afraid of the uh, heavy shadow over the eyes just to make them pop there we go starting to work a little bit better Yeah, if when I'm doing these live videos, um, if you guys see me looking up a lot, because um, I've got a screen up here so I can see your comments, um, I also have this image up on the screen because um, I can see it a lot better on the screen than I can here because the way the lights are set up. The lights on my desk are set up so it looks okay for these live streaming things. It's not really the best thing for drawing. So these teeth are set in the back of the mouth. I get a little bit of shading on these just to make them sit back. Um, again, just to bring a little bit of depth to the mouth there. So, 
So yeah, so I went off on a bit of a tangent. Like I say, a lot of people kind of ask me about the um, the materials and stuff that I use when I'm drawing. Um, I sometimes sort of deliberately avoid answering um, because it don't really make any difference. I think people get way too tied up in in what materials to use. I mean, my absolute favourite thing to sketch with is a is a barra, just a cheap ten pence barra. Um, they're an awesome tool to sketch with. Uh, you don't need particularly expensive paper. Um, I think getting a, a heavy grade paper is is good if you can get something around about sort of minimum 170 GSM. Ideally, you want to be going for like 220, 250 GSM. Uh, so with a bit of weight to it, mainly just because it just holds up a little bit better. You can you can treat it a little bit more so so roughly. Um, but it doesn't have to be massively expensive. I mean, I have I have sketchbooks that are 20 sheets of paper and they're, they're 40 quid, and it's it's great paper. It's nice, but it's kind of it's a bit of a waste. I've got other sketchbooks that are 200 sheets of paper and they're a tenner, and it absolutely does the job. It's fine. Um, what you want to be looking for. Um, it's something that you're comfortable sketching with, first of all, because everybody's slightly different. I always go for a, a smooth paper um, for whatever I'm doing, whatever type of uh, sketching, painting, whatever. I prefer a smooth paper. Um, that's just my personal preference. Like I say, always go for the heaviest paper possible. Um, if you want to be going over 200 GSM ideally, uh, because it can just stand a little bit more. Uh, you can. You can really sort of work pencil sketches and then throw watercolor at it and then throw a bit of ink at it and it'll, it'll stand up to it. If you're getting something that's kind of using photocopier paper, like 120, 130 GSM, the stuff's just going to rip and fall apart. Maybe not particularly nice to work with. Um, like I said, you don't need to go for Bristol board or anything like that because this stuff is seriously expensive. It's just not really worth it. Um, these things, um, I originally didn't stick to a brand with graphite sticks. Um, so I, I tend not to sketch with pencils. I don't even know if I've got any pencils in it. Um, I, I use graphite sticks, woodless pencils. Um, but these guys, uh, the Evneed, um, they're not massively, massively expensive. Come in a set like this. I get like a range of different ones. Uh, for about 15 quid or something, um, and they they properly do the job. They just kind of keep going. Um, the nice nice things to work with. They're just a little bit nicer than than working with just a, a pencil with wood on it. Yeah, you tend to have to sharpen them a lot less as well. Um, if you do a lot of sketching, you're going to get through them. Um, but they there's a nice sort of feel to them. Um, Pens, no, uh, so it depends really. Whatever pen you are comfortable with. Um, these guys are pretty sick. Uh, if you're doing inking, uh, pilot drawing pens, kind of nice. Um, range of different sizes. They're all they tend to be fairly good. Pilot are pretty good at doing drawing pens, to be honest. Um, and best thing I've got, best sort of tool I've got, if I can find it. Uh, I've got a bunch of these things. So I, I work in watercolour a lot, like a hell of a lot, um, because it's such a, a quick way of of painting, of colouring stuff. I'm not sure if I've got any there. Um, ah, here we go. Hidden conveniently behind my, my wine bottle. Uh, <laughs> these things. Um, so this is a, a brush pen with water in the pen, refillable. Um, and these things are these things are ace. So instead of carrying around loads of pots and loads of different brushes and stuff, you just carry one of these and a little mini paint set. So I have a tiny little paint set I tend to carry around with me. Um, this one's got kind of a few more, a few more bits and pieces in. But these literally just have water in them. You wet them, you can paint on as you need to. Give them a little squeeze, and you can get some colours on there. Um, dirt cheap as well. I mean, they're sort of like three quid each. Um, but a really nice little way of sketching so quickly adding colour to stuff um, I mean that for me is always always kind of 
the most important thing is having materials that are robust enough to stand up to yeah chucking different different materials at them um, because that's how I work um, but also ones that ideally don't take a load of setting up and a huge amount of care to to kind of work with you know you want stuff that you can just, you can just draw with um, without having to worry about it too much but other than that it's mainly it's finding stuff that you enjoy finding stuff that you like you like using uh, so just kind of experiment a little bit you know messing this guy up a little bit. I want to get kind of a few a few stray hairs in there. He's got a full on uh, a bit of lockdown growth going on. It's narrow as fell. Hope it helps. So it gives a shout anytime if you want any sort of advice. But, um, I, I literally spent years working with really expensive materials. You know, I've, I've got to have the best drawing materials to do the best drawings. And you, you just don't. You really don't. It's, it's about finding the stuff that you're comfortable with. Um, that can stand up to a bit of a hammer and um, that's kind of key. You should do rugs, man. Go for it. So. I mean, paintings, oh, I'm going to bang a bit of colour on this thing in a minute. Um, just, because why not? I've still got half a, half a glass of wine left, I might as well stick some in. Um, there's, I personally love painting watercolour. Um, I don't just do this stuff, so anybody that's kind of followed my work or to my portfolio and that kind of stuff. Obviously, I'm done a lot of children's illustrations over the years um, I've done a lot of kind of big big murals um, I sort of paint portraits I've done comic book art computer game art all this kind of stuff I've kind of done a, a bunch of different things um, partly because I was never I was never taught to draw I taught myself to draw um, so I didn't go to art school or anything like that um, and I just drew stuff that I wanted to draw and in styles that I wanted to draw um, but that means yeah, I kind of experimented with lots and lots of different styles and techniques. Um, and what colour is something I've, I've always stuck to as much as possible. So oil painting, I kind of quite enjoy oil painting, but it's, it's, it takes so long. It's such a laborious thing to put oil painting together. Um, it really is sort of time consuming. It's a lot of effort. Which is nice if you've got the time, but most of the time, um, I don't really have the patience. Watercolors, you can just throw at something and get some kind of really sort of cool effects um, pretty quickly. And there's there's kind of a flow to watercolor as well that um, I've always quite liked. So you can see from from the drawings that I do, um, they're a combination of detailed and very rough sketchy not too not too detailed at all um, and watercolor lends itself to that very well like I say so experiment find something that you uh, you like working with I think I'm gonna. Uh, what about what about pastels? Um, okay. 
I, I don't I don't mind using pastels. I don't use them very often. The, the only time I tend to use pastels these days is, is for covering big areas, um, so sort of backgrounds. So if I'm working on a a piece like this, um, and then I start looking at kind of like I want to bring in some some mountains here in the background, um, and I want to start getting some some shading on these, and then you know, I want to get a bit of texture and. We go. Got another bit of mountain there, so this guy's got walking through the hills. And this would be a nice opportunity to throw in some uh, some pastels because you can cover big areas. You can keep it relatively sort of light, um, so your focus remains on um, sort of what's in the foreground. Because um, that's the kind of thing where you do in background is you, you most of the time you want them to be less detailed than the foreground, so your foreground image pops out a little bit. So. In that case, pastels work pretty well. Um, they're, they're a bit of a, a, bit of a pain for me. They, they, they tend not to work particularly well for the way that I draw, um, just because I do draw quite quick and sort of um, messy, really. And, and pastels are really messy, so I'm medium to work with. Um, like I said, they've got the place. They're, uh, they're cool if you get the hang of them. If you enjoy using them, you can do some awesome artwork with pastels. Um, it's just, yeah, for me personally, it's not something that I've, I particularly enjoy. Right, I'll show you quickly on this. This is a, a cool little thing. Um, so here's my, here's my set of pants. Um, let's just shift this over a little bit. This is a bit too big on here, really. Um, cool. And this baby, this is this is awesome. Love this. Um, I, I, I discovered these uh, through um, a friend of mine, Shu Rayner. Um, so Shu Rayner is a an awesome kind of children's illustrator, cartoonist. Um, I, I met him at a children's book festival. So we were both working on together, um, and he had his little sketchbook and a little set of paints um, that I always did, um, except I always carried around a little pot of water and a paintbrush and stuff, and then he had these things um, that are just ace. Um, so yeah, I've got Shu Rayner to thank for this. Um, Shu Rayner, another one who is well worth checking out his work. Um, if you're into sort of cartoons and children's illustration and stuff, it's really cool. Um, Really nice guy. Uh, does some just some cool work. Does a lot of kind of online drawing classes as well. There we go. We're just gonna start bringing in a little bit of this background color. And what you start to see is how the, uh, the foreground image just pops out a little bit. So we're going rough as hell on this thing. Um, it's no real detail at all. We're just getting in a little bit of this shading, splashing a bit of water around. Um, it's not particularly heavy on the paint, it's a bit of a wash cover. Um, cover a big space without too much too much sort of pigment. Uh, again, these things you just kind of keep keep squeezing while water comes out. Um, and then you can you can wash. And this is why I sort of prefer to use a, a heavy grade paper. Um, so this isn't watercolor paper. This is just a heavy grade card, not card, sorry, heavy grade cartridge. Um, so it's 220 GSM. This stuff. Um, it's not massively expensive, but it's not. It's not the cheapest ever. I think this stuff, yeah, 100 sheets of it for about, for about 30 quid. Um, but it can stand up to 40 minutes of banging a load of ink, uh, pencil and charcoal at it and stuff, and then you can throw water and things at it, and it's not going to wrinkle too much. It's not going to rip apart. It's not going to start to bobble. Um, it's just like I say, for me, that's what I sort of look for in a, in a paper that I'm using. Um, everybody's a bit different, and everybody works the same way I do, so... Find something that you're 
see what's so happy with. Right, we're going to start to bring in a little bit of shade on this guy. Let's get some, again, just squeeze some water through there. I mean, we've done most of the work with the uh, with the graphite pencils. We just want to be hinting at bits of colour with this. Um, See, so sometimes kind of picking up paint on the brush. Sometimes you just kind of squeeze in a little bit more water out um, to keep it a bit lighter. Because so what you'll find is with the, the graphite pencils as well, it's an area that they're pretty sturdy against water. Um, but those areas where you have really, really sort of pounded a lot of graphite into the, um, the brush will will pick it up and spread it around a little bit. So you just got to be aware of that when you're adding colour. Um, that it's going to start adding darker areas. Um, so you just got to sort of plan for that as you're adding in your shading. So you can see there. I was just picking up a little bit of that graphite and sort of spreading it around, which with a bit of practice, you use to your advantage, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, but if you're expecting to just pin it over and the graphite stay exactly where it is, it, it doesn't really do that. Squeeze a bit more water out there, there we go. A little bit more brown. So with this, we're just adding in areas of the heavier shading. We're leaving areas that kind of highlights just to bring a little bit of depth to the character. And again, start adding a few little bits and pieces of texture. Okay, so my um. This is one of the things you'll kind of get when you if you paint a lot as well. Um, well, I suppose it depends on how you work. Some people will wash the palette out kind of regularly. Um, I don't at all. So I have the colours and shades and stuff that I use quite a lot. Um, so obviously there's dark greys and dark blues and stuff that you kind of throw in to add a little bit extra into the shading. Um, blues are kind of quite nice. Um, for getting some sort of, well, sort of tonal values and some of the stuff that you're doing, um, depending on what you on what you're painting. But I tend to leave these sort of colours on here, because um, they they get used a fair bit. Banging a little bit of red. Um, I start to put this in on the uh, on the gums. Want some nice sort of like now they're looking sort of bloody gums. Um, the thing is when you're when you're painting sort of in watercolour or anything really um, I mean it's not a hard and fast rule but you generally avoid using these colours raw um, sort of as they are. Uh, mix them up, like turn them down just a touch so you'll see in here with the red it's coming in with a little bit of brown there's a little bit of kind of ochre in there um, it's not precise, but it just stops it being this ultra garish red. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more, more sort of natural feeling, I suppose. Let's just get a little bit of shading in there on the lips. So I want kind of a burn, a burn colour up here. So let's just get some of this slightly off-white to mix in 
the yellow rocker down here. We've got this muddy, muddy beige colour. It's kind of perfect. Just back in a little bit of a deck and off touch. There we go. A little bit of a shadow along this guy. Red beard. Yeah, no, I think you're. Uh, I think uh, make this guy a bit of a ginger nut. Why not? So we don't want to. We don't want to go overly bright. On the beard. Pick a little bit of dark red in there. But we want to turn it down a little bit with some brown. There we go. That'll do it. So let's just start working in a bit of this. So initially our colour is all going on this dark side where the shadow is. Let's get a few extra wisps over there as well. Really mess this thing up. Bit dark over onto the left hand side where I've got that heavy shadow. The thing is, when you paint it with watercolour, um, because if, for me it's about kind of just letting it do its own thing a little bit, you start guiding it around, but you're not. You're not being ultra precise with it. Um, see how I'm kind of going over lines and, and letting the water sort of flow a little bit. Um, and it, it all comes with practice, you know. Um, and get, but if you try, if you're trying to do stuff that is like really super precise, it just looks a bit naff. Um, it's just, it's a, it's, it's, if that's the way you work, go for it. Um, so. I'll, Find the ways that, that that you find comfortable working. Um, but for me, the reason I like watercolor is that you can just kind of fling colors around a little bit. Um, see, yeah, I mean, pencil grains are pencil grains are great for the control, um, and that's I mean, one of the things that I I try and get through in a lot of the lessons that I do tonight's obviously not a lesson but one of the things I do try and get through and um when I'm teaching people to draw a paint um is to try and be a little bit more sort of free with stuff. Um not to worry about making things perfect and ultra crisp and that. Um mistakes are a good thing. Mistakes especially when you're doing this kind of painting. Um they're what make it look alive. Um a bit of life to things, all these kind of splodges and bits and pieces going on that you didn't really plan. Um, that's where watercolor is really good because water's kind of got a life of its own and it sort of moves around and flows. And then when you start when you start using it, you will make mistakes. Uh, but the more the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Um, it's just such a cool thing to to work with. So you can sort of like see. See here, just by uh, slightly less water, slightly more, slightly more ink or watercolor. Um, you start to build in little textures on the skin, little scar spots and scars that just just start to add this whole whole other element to your painting, to your picture. Yeah, pencil grains are great. Um, pencil grains work really well for certain things. I, I I don't use them for a different reason to not using pastels. I mean, I do use pencil grains more often than I use pastels. Um, but it's, like I say, I have very little 
sort of patience when it comes to when it comes to sort of drawing and painting. Um, I like to work quite quickly. Pencil cranes are something where you need to take a little bit of time. You need to build up the layers. You need to, it's uh, it's quite a slow a slow process, which is nice. This is a very sort of methodical way of drawing. Um, that's just not how I work, really. Let's just bring in, uh, squeeze this guy. We're running out of water in that, but it'll do for now. Let's just give it a bit of the white on those teeth. It's just a little bit too crisp for my liking. Okay, we're gonna. Getting some quite thick on the yellow there for these eyes. So I want this guy to look a little bit messed up. It's like yellowish, yellowish tinge to the eyes. It's getting nice and thick with that. That same yellow, I'm gonna just add a few little a few little highlights. Gonna use the same one again. Just adding a few bits on the earrings, uh, on that nose ring. A little bit on there. Now, let's get a little bit of blue mixed in with that. So we've got this kind of mucky, mucky greenish brown sort of colour. Um, let's just keep this nice and loose, but we can. Just shared a few of these tattoos very loosely. Um, that's the thing is with this, we don't want um, we don't want the tattoos to be the focus of the of the illustration. Um, if you get in and you start kind of putting too much detail on them, that's going to draw your eye when you first look at it. And you don't want it to. You want them to be a little extra that's kind of added on. Um, so we can even add some extra bits here. This is stuff that it's not fully distinguishable, but it just adds to the whole kind of feel of it. So we've clearly got bits of tattoo sort of coming in here, but you don't know what they are really. Like I say, that's kind of what you want. Um, So right, we're going to stick in a few of the bits. I'm basically going to paint this until I run out of water in here, because I can't really be bothered to go and get more water. Um, so we'll stop once that's gone. Um, go look. We're just going to bring a little bit more shading in on this. These kind of sand dune sort of shapes. These are all nice and loose. You just pin in the areas that are catching shadow. You're not worrying too much about the actual detail at all. So you see under here, shadow's being caught. And there you go, it's a little bit of depth. Same with here. Backgrounds. Um, nice and loose so yeah your focus sort of stays on on the actual characters you know um you bang a load of detail in the background and again it's just gonna it's gonna flatten your image it's gonna dry your eye away from from the, all this stuff you've been doing i think we can get away with that in a, a wee bit more color there just to Nothing too precise. Let's just bang a bit of that up. I'm uh, sort of limited for space here. I need a bigger drawing table. There we go. So one thing has been kind of quite nice the last few weeks drawing here. 
um, so I um, those are sort of done. Uh, I run a I run a marketing agency alongside my sort of illustration stuff, um, and that's where I do most of my work these days. Uh, obviously, everyone's everyone's on lockdown at the moment, um, so my little studio setup that I have there um, hasn't been used for a while. So I've had to, I've had to start using this little, little studio at home, um, which is nice. You know, it takes a bit of getting used to. Um, quite as much space here. Okay, we just need to get in a couple of bits here to start looking up on the camera. Like I say, the lighting isn't ideal for um, for doing this. I've got the lighting set up on my desk for the for the live stream. Um, so I can't necessarily see all the light and shade properly without looking up at the camera. <laughs> um, I was banging in a couple of bits. It's a little bit darker there. So it's these darker bits that will sort of bring things to life a little bit more. So these are all, these will add the real depth to your uh, to your illustration. Um, we're pretty much out of, out of ink in that thing now, so yeah, last few bits have just sort of gone. Just adding a couple of last, last bits and pieces of texture. Um, but yeah, my laziness and my unwillingness to stand up and go and refill my, my brush um, means we're going to be ending this in just a minute. whole thing like walking into the room and getting water in the brush and at this point like five past midnight seems like way too much effort there we go it's banging a couple of darker bits of shade in here And a couple up here just to finish off these uh user wine. <laughs> nice it's nice wine. Not wasting wine or painting. Um fairly certain I've done that a few times in the past, but yeah, not tonight. There we go. Okay, last uh last little thing if I can find it. There we go. So this is the this bang a little bit over there. So this pen is a, a white white ink pen. Um if it's working, it's my run out. Um so it's like I was saying, not to be afraid of um using using black um using areas of hair heavy shading um don't be afraid to use areas of, of white either um these areas can just make your make your illustrations pop so if we get in here I'm adding in a few little areas of uh just in the mouth a few little bits and pieces of of spit 
extra shine on the it's a bang a little bit more shine on the eyes just to sort of bring them to life a little bit um, let's just highlight a few of those Has. Okay, I'm keeping this nice and rough really. There's a few little white highlights with the pen that's running out way too much. There you go. Sweet. So these areas where you got a really heavy shading. Um bang in a few little kind of white highlights. Just adds another layer, another little piece of depth um, to your drawing. Again. Again, for those that want the uh, want the same things, these are uni Posca pens. Um, this is kind of white white paint pens. Um, not massively expensive. These things, a few quid each. And for for highlights, um, for this kind of sort of finishing touch, they're really nice. Uh, the drawing I did I've got next to my desk here is a drawing I did um, thought previously. This is from another live stream from the ages ago, um, where they're really nice for kind of drawing on drawing on brown card. Um, so these white pens for outlining stuff and doing little highlights and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, Okay, look pretty good for that. Um, obviously, working on non-white paper, either brown, black, uh, craft paper, whatever. Um, white pens sort of coming to the round, pretty useful for that. And you get some really nice effects once you play about. But let's do a few little bits of spit in there again. Just a few little highlights. On there. Ragsman, don't know if you're still there, but good show on the album, mate. it's probably good. Um, let's just get a few little those cracks and bits and pieces on the lip. little dots and bits of texture just to add another little level to this thing there we go I think we're uh, I think we'll leave that leave that there for tonight um, there we go so yeah, cool. Um, thank you, thank you for joining me. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've uh, either picked up a, a few bits and pieces or managed to pass an hour with a with a glass of wine and just chill out a little bit and escape from the madness that is everywhere. Um, so tomorrow morning I'll do another I'll do another drawing session, um, the kids drawing tutorial. I'll probably do some more of these late night drawing things because I mean, I'm not going anywhere, you know. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, I, will, I will catch you all again soon.